Hello, everybody. Welcome to Mastermind Monday. And I really cannot believe it's the beginning of it's October. And I didn't want to tell you the countdown days to Christmas, so we won't go there. But welcome to fall. And uh, Christine, thank you for managing this with me today. Lisa, our president is away on vacation. I think she's wrapping up. And we are joined by Kim Cameron. And Kim, I downloaded your uh, intro via our CRS website. And if I can do a quick intro with you, because you'll be teaching our class later this month. And I'll give you all the details on the chat. And actually while I'm here, it will be uh, 1028 and 1029 from 10 to 2 Eastern time on both days. So um, it's a total of eight hours and it's about building your team to grow your business. I'm really looking forward to that class. And so Kim, you'll be talking a little bit about that or whatever else you'd like to speak about. But if I can introduce you um, on your uh, intro here on CRS, you are an undiagnosed real estate addict, apparently, Kim, as it says so here. And you live and breathe real estate since 1997, I guess probably before then too. Um, and you hail from St. Louis and offer a background in building, rehabbing, property management, and mortgage lending, actually, too. You built your successful real estate team in 2005 with your husband and business partner. And Sid um, has never looked back. And you and Sid, I would imagine, both of you have never looked back. Um, still he's also uh, a high-energy speaker, trainer, and top-producing realtor. Um, and as an RPAC major investor, uh, Kim is committed to advocacy, protecting property rights, and home ownership. And you also serve on the board, um, RRC Board of Directors, with past service as a region VP, um, Missouri RRC President, Finance Committee, and Masterminds. You also serve on the Missouri Realtor Executive Committee and RPAC Chair for St. Louis Realtors and the recipient of the 2019 Elizabeth Mendenhall E3 Award for Missouri Realtors for Energy, Empowerment, and Experience. And Kim, I'm going to have you take it away. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm pretty sure I said, just shore that down. It's really <laughs> long and kind of boring, and I might want to work on that. All right. Well, thank you so much for having me. Um, you know my thoughts. I selfishly love the New England RRC group and Massachusetts are my favorite, but don't tell anybody. I mean, I let you guys know when I'm with you, but I can't you know, rub it in everybody's face. Um, if you have a second to allow me to do a screen share that's gonna come from the host, um, which I think Christina is working on, and then I am gonna play with you for just a little bit. And you just give me the hook when you're done because I want to give you a preview to this class. One it's all good. Things, you, you should be able to share now. Oh, yay. Okay. Just One ignore the, things, the joining people. I'll manage that for you. So. All right. And you guys should see my slide. All right. You see my slides? Yes. Perfect. So um, I'm going to do a quick preview. You gave me, you gave my overview, realtor, uh, lover of golden retrievers, CRS, boom. Um, and because I love dogs, um, I will always shamelessly plug dogs. So those are mine. Um, but one of the things that it comes when building a team is, and I love this Jack Welsh quote, is before you're a leader, success is all about growing yourself. When you become a leader, success is all about growing others. And you have to get into that mindset of being a leader when you're building a team. Um, and leaders are readers. We are always learning. We are always um, working to be better at our craft so that we can make sure that we're providing the best for those that are underneath us, whether it's starting with an admin or buyer's agents or just a full massive team. Um, always sharpening your skills to be the best leader that you can be. Not only uh, ensures that the culture that you want in your team stays there, but also lowers attrition. My first buyer's agent I hired 17 years ago is still with me. Now I've had a couple of bad hires along the way, but that's a big part of this course. Um, but one of the things that this course will go through is recognizing when is it time to hire? You know, what are those signs that you need to leverage growth because you just are struggling to get it all done? And typically that is what I call that 20%, that 20% of your business that doesn't get done because we don't have a time to do it, or quite honestly, we avoid doing it. You know, that stuff that we just don't like to do in our business, but that 20% is really where you start identifying that first assistant to hire. So we're going to talk about recognizing signs for growth. 
We're going to also talk about um, ways to hire within the team structure that may be best for your business. And that's the beauty of real estate. There is no one perfect team or, or way of running your practice um, and being that active practitioner in real estate. You can do whatever you want. You can tailor your business that fits how you want to serve your clients. So we're gonna talk about how to hire. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about how to fire, which isn't necessarily a big topic in this book. I'm not good at hiring, but I will give you some great tips on what I do to compensate for that because I wanna hire people that I'd like to hang out with, which is a weakness. I'm phenomenal at firing. They love me, they hug me, and they refer all their friends to me. So we're gonna talk about some of the best ways of, of hiring within your team structure and how do we um, how do we find the right people? You know, where do you find the, the, the first admin or the next admin or that next buyer's agent or listing specialist or inside sales rep, inside sales assistant at ISA or somebody that's leading the whole kit and caboodle? Um, we're going to talk about ways that you can, you know, find the right people in the right places and conducting interviews. Um, I'll tell you how I do interviews that has worked for me very successfully and also um, some other ways that come from this course, which is written by some of the top peeps in the country. We're gonna analyze compensation plan. I will give you my compensation plan that I use for my team. I'll give it to you in Microsoft Word so you can edit and make it your own. This started as a one page comp plan from my broker about 14 years ago and I have since turned it into four pages that covers every scenario under the sun. And when we find a scenario we haven't seen, we add it to the comp plan. Because at the end of the day, um, we wanna make sure that those underneath us are meeting their financial goals. And when you have it in writing, there's a lot less confusion, there's a lot less concern, um, and it just keeps things exactly where they need to be. Oops. Um, we'll also talk about um, job titles. And when you onboard someone, making sure that you have a binder that is exactly what they're supposed to be doing. You know, have that workflow because if somebody does leave or gets sick or goes on maternity or takes a three week European vacation or whatever it is, you wanna make sure that all of those um, job titles and responsibilities are written down. And one of the first things that my first full-time assistant who wasn't virtual did was create a workflow binder. So if she's out of the office or well, she has her laptop if she's working from home, but if she's out or on vacation, um, we actually know how to do her job. So there needs to be some repetition within that in your, in your team. Um, and then also the, the, this should be the second to last thing is establishing best management practices for onboarding. Um, I took from another CRS an eight week onboarding and edited it and made it my own. And I will share that with you as well. Um, within this class. And there's a little bit of onboarding in this course. I like what I have better. So I'm going to give that to you because it's some of the best practices that I've learned from other team teams. Right now I am onboarding my fourth buyer's agent. So I am in week four of onboarding and how to create that, that accountability, creating the best practices, having those weekly meetings to make sure that when they're coming onto your team, that the first thing they're doing is building their sphere of influence because they need that baseline business and they need to bring something to the table that you can also help, help them work and grow. Um, and what does that look like? The more organized you are, the more retention you have with that person that joins your team. I hear over and over, the reason that buyer's agents or somebody leaves a team is because the team lead was too disorganized. They, they, ever, they were running in too many directions. They were a great cheerleader, but they didn't have the back end systems and infrastructure to make them feel really confident that things were going in the right direction. So we're gonna talk about you know, some pretty basic ways to be a manager of your team, but also creating the culture and core values that fits who you are and what you want to project in your business and make sure that the people that you hire match that as well. Uh, let's see. Oops. And then lastly is we're gonna look at making you know, decisions that fit your team culture. Um, well, I'll share with you, and I'll share this again uh, at the end of the month, 
when I hire, because I used to hire people that I like, um, now I'm not allowed to hire. If somebody's interested or we've identified a, a candidate, I may talk with them over the phone, but there's someone else they go through first, and that's my broker. She's a great closer. She's very discerning. And she's the clearinghouse to decide, is this person right for my team? Or maybe they shouldn't be on my team, but in our company. And if she thinks they're good for my team, then their second meeting is with my team, not with me. Because if the members of my team don't like this person I'm getting ready to onboard, they don't meet me. It starts with them. I need to make sure that that hire fits the culture of our team and that they are the right fit to complement what we already have going on. And once they say, oh my gosh, I love them. Yes, bring them on. Then they meet with me. Then we have a good time. We talk turkey. We talk about their financial goals and make sure that I'm in a position to meet them. Because at the end of the day, they can be the most amazing candidate. But as a team leader, if I'm not able to meet their goals or their goals aren't realistic for what's possible, they tell me they want to, you know, they're year one in business and they want to make $200,000 net GCI. That's probably not going to be me in this market. But if they say, well, right now I'm currently making 40,000, I'd like to make more than that. Yeah, there's a really good chance I can help them net that um, from the date of their first closing that first 12 month cycle, absolutely. And how we can help them work their database, et cetera. So setting those expectations is really, really key. We're gonna go through um, long-term, we're gonna future cast your business and your personal. What are your long-term goals? Um, if I just taught a course last week, seven things successful agents do differently. And it talks about when to leverage growth, but it really goes into where do you want to be in three years, five years, 15 years, not only personally, but professionally, because at the end of the day, it's really both. How much money do you want into retirement so that you know how much money you need to still make to meet those goals? Because we need to be working to live, not living to work. And when you start targeting your perfect customer and not casting this broad net to some of us have thousands of people in our database. But if you start targeting the specific clients that if you nurture those relationships at a higher level, you have a higher level of return and referrals as a result. So how do you strategically put that into place so that you're working smarter, not harder? Because of that, along with the vision for your team will help guide the decisions that you make we'll do a task assessment. This is the toughest thing I hear from people that are super swamped with their real estate. They're going, I need to hire somebody, but I don't know where to start. We're going to go through a dig down deep, be honest with yourself. Where is my business? <laughs> and where am I wasting time? What do I really love to do? Because uh, sometimes the things that we love to do aren't the things that we should be doing. I could spend hours on Canva but that's not where I should be spending my time. I need to spend my time on high dollar per hour value tasks that bring listings and opportunities to the team that bring revenue to pay the assistant. So sometimes you have to really dig down deep. It's like a therapy session. You know, what are, if I'm really honest with myself, is Canva where I should spend my time or is it my happy place? Well, what does life look like if you spent your time getting three more listings that brought in income so you could actually take a day off or you could add in that next assistant or, or achieve uh, more for your retirement. So the task assessment is truly the hardest thing to do. I'm gonna give this to you guys in advance of the class because I think it's that important to work on it before we meet because it, as spending any less than 30 minutes on it is to me next to impossible because you've got to dig through your business. So I'll be sending that out to you guys to share with the, the registered students a couple of days before. So the other thing is rewarding your team, um, gamifying it, making them excited. You know, some members of my team want cash. They want that quarterly excitement. Whoever wins gets a $500 bonus. Others want something fun like, um, oh, so, you know, I talked about RPAC. So I like to buy things at the RPAC auction that I can use as rewards for my team, like Kate Spade backpack and things that I absolutely don't need, but I start stuffing them with cash and gift cards and massages and just stuff. And that becomes part of our quarterly incentive. And we have quarterly incentives for my buyer's agents based on gross commission income, meeting their goals and number of units sold. So 
and they each have their own goals. So who can exceed their personal goals as well as being top on the team. And it helps them work together to try to exceed where they wanna be. Um, and we have fun with it. We do a quarterly happy hour get together. And this fall is supposed to be at the wineries because it's beautiful in October. Um, but how are, way, how are things that you can do to keep that, that culture high on your team? Keep everybody positive and moving forward because this business um, can sometimes be quite challenging. So uh, I'm gonna to talk to you about ways that we do on our team and also some other things that you could be doing to just always you know, make decisions that are the best for your team. Talking about culture, I love this quote. Um, this is from Coach Phil Jackson. The strength of the team is the individual member. The strength of the individual member is the team. How true is that? That's true in so many scenarios. That's true as a broker. Um, it's true in a lot of different ways. Um, so it's just so key. And for those of you that join, that maybe have just started a team or have been on a team, but maybe want to go out on your own, um, I'm super excited to hear some of the team cultures that you've been on that are seen that you go, oh my gosh, that is what I want to emulate. Or I never want to do that. I want to do it differently. You know, kind of like the do it mom and dad say, <laughs> you know, act as, do what I say, not as I do kind of thing. So that's a big point, part of what we're going to be going through in this class. And um, it's just kind of my 15 minute run through. So I want to ask you guys, um, unmute yourselves and share with me, tell me about your business. Kurt, you have a team. Tell me about your team structure. Oh, thank you so much, Kim. And thank you for all the great information. I am so looking forward to that class. You've got, given us a little bit and we want so much more. Uh, so my team's uh, six members, executive director, buyer, uh, lead buyer specialist, and a ISA and a lead listing specialist. Okay, so where do you see your, your team? Where, where do you need to build your team? What do you think you need next? I'd like to grow it out to about 20 people. I think with okay. more depth, more ability to collaborate. But the, the question I would have for you is every time you add someone, it does change the culture a little bit. So maybe what techniques you've used to hold your incredible culture together as you expand. It does change the culture, which is why getting your team involved with who you hire is huge. Because if they don't like that person, and let me preface, we really haven't had a lot of that. Um, the last person I attempted to hire on my own without input um, lasted 90 days and um, showed up drunk at our pumpkin party. Um, and apparently everyone noticed she smelled a little bit of alcohol, except for me. I just thought it was her cologne. So I sometimes miss the cues. Um, but uh, I do hear if um, you need to have that reassurance within your team that this that we're all working together for a common goal. And as the team grows, so do your numbers. It's not that they're getting a little bit less of the pie. So you have to leverage that growth um, ex um, exponentially, not you know go from zero to 50. So identifying where are you in your team and when is it time to hire the next person? So we'll go through a lot of that in this class for sure. How about you, Anne? Um, I've, I've, where do I begin? So um, currently I serve as professional development director for the Rhode Island Association of Realtors. So my lens now is a little different. However, prior to this appointment, I was a licensee, a managing broker. Um, and I had, I'm in Rhode Island and I had seven of the top 12 teams under my broker's umbrella. I have the joy and the pain. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping, you know, that you will deliver um, a conversation with team leaders or potential thinking about it team leaders to look at life through the lens of the broker because in Rhode Island, quite honestly, it's your worst nightmare. So we need a smackdown, is what I'm hearing. No, no, we need to have <laughs> some fun. I'm all about making it fun. But I, you know, in Rhode Island, just so you know, um, there is a piece of the regulation that's going to be changed that caters strictly to teams. So we're going to be not handcuffed. We're going to be managed uh, a little more stringently, maybe, than maybe you are in St. Louis and other parts, if, if you would 
allow me, you know, maybe to work with you offline to make sure that, you know, our, our Rhode Island registrants um, understand, uh, you know, where you're coming from. Um, I, I, I don't want you to be put in a position where you get a couple of hecklers because we're kind of known for that sometimes. Sometimes our delicate, you know, professional uh, courtesies are not always extended and I don't want you to be in that position. So um, I'm coming at life a little bit different. Um, You're so sweet. I can totally take it. I don't them. know about that. You can ask Cheryl. <laughs> she and I go way back, you know, um, I am, yeah, sweet, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> I'll Bring it on. Cheryl. I can handle the hecklers. And I will always preface that you need to check with your local broker. You need to check with your state association, your local association for regulations that may be different or quirky in your location versus somewhere else. And if you but, if you want me to, I mean, I'm, I'm more than happy to kind of monitor with you because I don't want your, your delivery to be disrupted and I can take care of the hecklers because I know most of them. Awesome. And I am not <laughs> afraid. You, I, I don't think you are either. But Anne's going to do the smackdown. I, Perfect. Yeah, How about you, Cheryl? You. Yeah, I just want to. Looks like you're in your car. And I will send you uh, what our association compiled for teams best practices, so that way you can kind of fold your arms around it. Another thing too, I'd like to ask, especially for leadership in the group, Nora and Cheryl, would you permit me to ask CRS to get this approved for CE? Absolutely, of course. So they have their own school, and I don't want to differentiate Rhode Island, but I think I can get more members to to um, take the course if it does have CE, because we're all coming up to license renewal, which in our state is April 30th of next year. So we're in manic mode already. So um, I don't know what I have to do to get clearance to approach CRS if it's through you, Nora. Seems uh, you're licensing the course, but I, well, up so much time. Time. I think it's. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll mute Cheryl there. Um, yeah, we'll talk offline about it. Absolutely. We'll see what we can do for sure. And Nora, I just sent you who to reach out to the CRS that handles Thank all CE in each state. Terrific. Is Claudia still? Uh, no, Claudia doesn't handle CE. But oh, okay. We're all good there. Um, Never okay. takes, and I'm really looking forward to a SmackDown. <laughs> Should be fun. <laughs> Too, I haven't had one in a long time. <laughs> all right, well, Cheryl's got kids, I think, in the car. Is that what's happening? Cheryl. Now asked, we totally muted her. I did, I asked, go ahead, go ahead, Cheryl. You, Cheryl. We just had to take my daughter to um, doctor's appointment, so I switched my daughter goes in because she's a nurse and gets all the right information and then I watch her little girl so we would just trade off and just drop it off and all oh, good fun. all good reports so um to answer your question you know I don't my group the 12 people we're not we're individual contractors right and, and, and not so much a team um but what the problem that I've been having since 2009 when I opened my company was again the right fit like for marketing and technology. And so finally, I think I've resolved the problem. Playster has a, a great program called Concierge now. And um, in, instead of me hiring one particular talent like technology or marketing, um, there's a team of like probably five or six people that'll be doing different things for us um, in a, you know, with goals of like you are designing as well in the test. I'm interested in just filling that out. And where do you wanna go? logo wise, I mean, that's a little probably different for some people because I'm my own brand versus under the brand of, of someone else. Um, so it's, I think it's important from, from my team. I love the idea about um, swag and all that great stuff and quarterly because it keeps people connected, the real estate family within your company. Um, so I'm definitely gonna be, uh, you know, eyes and ears wide open to that. But my biggest pain has been consistent marketing video, um, what needs to be done to reach that we've all learned through COVID-19. So I'm psyched. And anyway. Got it. We don't go through a ton of marketing, but I absolutely can bring it into this class. I can share with you some things, how we market our team. Um, and actually, now that you mentioned, I'm going to make a quick note. 
about, um, I mean, I'm happy to share with you, here's my pre-list kit, here's our buyer's kit, here's how we prepare them. Here's how we not only present as a united front as a team, but how we also incorporate our um, main vendors. So how we get our lender at the forefront of the conversation, how we get our home warranty person, which doesn't sound like a big deal, but the warranty that we use is the only warranty in the country that allows the consumer to choose any vendor they want. So you're not at the mercy of whatever company, you know, 210 warranty uses. You call, say, hey, I've got to start a claim. They'll say, great, you know, do you need a plumber? Or do you have one? You can say, I have a plumber. And they're like, perfect, you call your plumber. So, I mean, there's, there's those kinds of conversations, but it's all at the forefront of um, our buyer's kit, our listing kit, how we present it. And that might be helpful as well. Great. Sounds great. Like. Okay, do I'll throw some of that in there for you. Do you have a contract with your team? Like you know, I don't. I have a comp plan because I want to be able to can them at any time. They do have an operating agreement with the brokerage. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> but uh, I have not had to fire anybody in three years. Um, and that was my first fire in probably 15 years. So wow. That's very um, good. Thank you. Yeah, I, um, when I stopped hiring myself and allowed other people to do it for me, things kind of worked out. When I went rogue, you know, she didn't last. And her name was Karen. So don't, don't be a Karen. <laughs> uh, Steve, what about you? You're in Rhode Island. Are you one of those disruptive teams? No, I'm, I'm a uh, sole, sole operator. I'm, I'm here primarily because I'm becoming addicted to Mastermind Monday. Uh, uh, and I have a mild interest in teams, but I don't anticipate uh, forming one anytime soon. Okay. Well, sounds good. Yeah, I love Mastermind Monday. It's been a while since I've been here. One thing, to, too, to differentiate, most people think with a team that that is you know, having a buyer's agent and, and whatnot, but it can also be kind of, as Steve is saying, as a, if you're your own person, is also to you know, have somebody help you with database management, which has been my big thing. So just to kind of have that be kind of in your mentality, that that's part of your team, even though you're the only one listing and selling yourself. For example, I still think of that as really a team rather than having buyers, you know, buyer team, a listing team. And kind of that, for lack of a better word, a mega team, so to speak. I agree. There is no solo practitioner anymore. This It takes a village to do what we do. Your team is your admin, your broker, your lender, your title company or attorneys. You know, that is all part of your village that helps get the, you know, get the, the cake baked. Um, you know, it's the secret sauce that helps you, you know, get that client to settlement. So whether you're a solo practitioner or maybe you have an, a part-time assistant and you're just trying to figure out from a marketing standpoint, I can tell you all day long how to sell against a team and vice versa. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's all how you skin the cat, but none of us do this business all by ourselves. There's just too many pieces of the puzzle. I mean, just this morning, I reached out to my title company. We do title company, not attorneys. Um, for a closing, uh, we have one today, we have one last Friday, we've got one coming up later this week. We're all confused on where the closing is because it was a 90 day contract, which seems like we wrote it a decade ago. Um, I call that COVID time. Like I feel like the last year has been four years. Um, 90 days seems like a year. I'm still can't you know, deal with a long contract, but um, you know, and it's, it's relying on those backend partners that just make make it seamless for your client. And that's the end of the day, all of this that we do is to create better systems, to offer better customer service, um, a higher net bottom line and you know, better quality of life because it's really easy to be greedy and take, take, take a lot of business in the, right now. And it's a little bit easier to be a hunter or to be a gatherer than a hunter. Um, but when it comes to listings, we need to hunt like crazy. And so my entire team is hunting. I increased how much they get for when they bring a listing to the team, because right now listings are scarce. So um, all of that will come into play into this course. So how about you, Ms. Christine? It's good to see you again. Oh, good to see you too. Um, this is fascinating. I do a lot of training for new agents. And so this is where I'm like, gosh, that would be, yeah. A lot of what you talked about is exactly where folks need to spend more time when they start 
kind of thing. So even if it's not my team, it's helping people know is what are they doing? Why are they doing it? Are they a fit? And part of what I'm interested to in how to balance the um, independent contractor, because we all are, um, and keeping that line where it needs to be. So they're not employees on, you know, not that I think any of us are in that path, but could so easily we're not going be rogue. Yeah, going rogue <laughs> oh, or in a situation where you can become an employee accidentally. Send me an email. I'll give you um, when I onboarded my team, and I'll put this in the class too. Cool. Since you te teach um, a lot of newbies that are just starting out, mm -hmm. just do. I lost my screen. Oh, hello. 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 There we are. Okay, I'm back. Um, the first thing that I have people do when they when they get into real estate or join my team mm -hmm. is I download Michael Mayer's The Ultimate Memory Jogger. And I print it because it organizes from like top to bottom. Who are your family members, friends, church groups, places that you're giving your time and talent. Um, and then everything from artist to zookeeper, everything under the sun from every possible profession. And I'm like, go through and highlight every single one that you know someone because they're like, oh my gosh, my fourth kid just got a pair of, of braces. You just paid for that for their you know son's year of college, but yet they don't know you're a realtor mm -hmm. and neither do people in the office and going through that that's the start of jogging your memory and then from there downloading um yes i will put that in the chat room and then downloading the um your entire contacts from your phone into a csv file and mm -hmm. same thing with facebook and linkedin yeah. and if you don't know how to do it go to youtube because right. all of that together is the start of a database and that's where the rubber meets the road for success in this business. Um, most people, you know, I know agents that, I mean, after years in the business, they don't have business plans. Um, they, sorry, I'm typing at the same time. Um, they don't really have an organized database. They just somehow sell real estate. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great, but that's this. That's the mm -hmm. roller coaster. You want to get rid of the roller coaster. It's how much you nurture that database and make it work for you. And so the first eight weeks of onboarding, a big part of that is working that database and getting it organized so that me as the team lead can start working it for them. Exactly. So that's a huge piece. Mm -hmm. um, and I might even be able to put that in the chat room. Let's see. Yeah, that would be great. I know one thing I learned, actually, I think it was a couple of years ago at the MAR conference was somebody had spoken was, you know, I guess you'd call it. Q&A or whatnot, but someone had mentioned that even if you hire somebody and start out in the business, just somebody two hours a week, it's to help you with just to some your database or something. So you can be accountable to another person and just get that database going is so important. And I know, you know, that I've been lax on that myself. And anyway, so I've been going through contraction, expansion, contraction, expansion. <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to the class. Nice. Thank you. Thank you so um, much, Nora, for putting that in the chat as well. The link yes. to be able to register for that class. I've clicked oh, on it. I've registered it. I would encourage everyone to do the same because this content's just absolutely fantastic. It really it is. is. And it looks like yeah, I, you just posted yeah. uh, Michael Mayer. The yeah, Ultimate it looks like Jogger. I can't um, load anything that's not in Dropbox or Drive, and I don't have that in Drive. But honestly, if you Google Michael Mayer, the Ultimate Memory Jogger, you will find that and be able to download it. Um, it's an awesome, just a really simple, easy thing, but it's great for anybody that's doing new licensing, CE, um, broker owners, office managers. Uh, it's just a good tool. So I've known Michael since, gosh, before he wrote his first book. Uh, he's just a solid guy and I, I love that piece. That's great. Cheryl, did you have a question? I saw you raise your hand. You know, I just wanted to say October is a fantastic month to plan for 2022. Mm -hmm. um, I always encourage everyone in my office um, to take the class, like let them register, let them pay for it, and then I'll reimburse them. So I think it's a good partner in their success. And if, if you can bring it back to your own company, I'm sure your, your broker owner would probably love to do that for your, your team as well. So um, thank you so much. I really look forward to this. I need to get plugged back in and that's right on time. Yes, I'm really thank looking you. forward to it, Kim. And thanks, Cheryl. 
And thanks everyone for being here. I guess we, there was an issue with Facebook. It was down today. It is so down. That's why a lot of in Instagram and it still is. So I think that's why we only had um, eight people here, but it was great or seven. And um, Kim, we are so excited for later this month to see you and register. I know I still have to register. I'm going to do that right after we end the Zoom call. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kim. Thanks. Thank I'll you. see you guys soon. Excellent. Thank Bye -bye. you. All right. Have a great week. Thank you. Bye.